Why rookie wide receiver Rashad Bateman is in the perfect situation with the Baltimore Ravens. Should Greg Roman be on the hot seat? One improvement that the Ravens need to make this year that nobody's really talking about. These and many more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports shot out in Graven YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and another episode of questions from subs which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any player team coach whatever and we answer it in a video like this if you would like to be part of NFL questions from subscribers you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon appreciate y'all shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons by the way Love y'all. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you all for supporting the channel. Thank you all for all the questions that you send. We can't answer them all. And I appreciate the fact that y'all are so patient that we can't answer them all. We can't answer them right away because we get a lot. And on top of doing a question from subscribers, we, of course, do a lot of other videos as well. So question from subscribers, we get it in when we can. So thank you all for being so patient with the process because it is a process. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Like today is June 12th. It is Saturday, 8, 12 a.m. on June 12th. When are you going to see this episode? No clue. Because I got episodes that we've done a little while ago and y'all still haven't even seen them to this day. But anyway, thank you and trust the process. Let's get into it. First question came from my guy, Antonio. He said, do you think Miles Boykin should switch positions to tight end so he can make the roster? No, I do not. He is not going to switch to tight end. They could use him in some different patterns, but no, he's not going to switch to tight end for him to make the roster. I think he's going to make the roster uh, as a wide receiver, um, especially since they love his blocking. But now they, they have an opportunity, again, to get him more involved in the passing game. But for him to switch to tight end, no, not going to happen. They already got like 23 tight ends on the roster. I mean, make Adam Miles Boykin at tight end will make it 24. So, no. Next question came from Taj. He said, bro, where's Duvernay? What is his role going to be on this year's team? I love him at the three wideout. Duvernay, um, I think he'll be the primary returner. Uh, and that could be definitely kick return, but maybe even punt returner as well. Because we remember when James Prochet, he was originally the uh, punt returner, but then uh, after they added Yannick Ngakwe and toward the end of the season, the numbers game just forced James Prochet to be on the inactive list. Uh, so I could see Devin Duvernay having that role. I could also see Devin Duvernay doing a lot of damage uh, out of the slot this year. Uh, maybe they really incorporate him there a lot more. Uh, maybe he alternates roles with like Hollywood Brown because I'm sure they're going to have Hollywood moving around uh, on the outside and also in the slot too. So Devin Duvernay, he's going to have his role for sure. I mean, because he even had it last year. And when you think about it, last year was the C-19 season. It was the pandemic season. And he still had a role even though he didn't have an off season. So with an off season, with the added coaching staff, with the new plays put in place that I expect... I think Devin Duvernay gets significant snaps. Next question came from my guy in the room. He said, yo, Engraven, it's been a minute since I've done one of these, but you know, man on a mission vibes. I feel you, man. That's how it be sometimes. He said, anyway, let's get to it. Bateman has walked into the perfect scenario with the Ravens, and here's why. For years, the Ravens have lacked the ability to develop young, to develop young wide receiver talent. For years, they relied on veterans who had been there and done that to carry the workload, and that has led to younger talent falling prey to the system. Uh, a system that doesn't take the time and effort to develop a position that is vital to any team's success. We've puzzled season after season why we can't develop a position that's vital to any team's success. I wondered the same question until I kept thinking about our HR, Human Resources Department. HR lacked the capability to hire quality wide receiver coaches who can teach route concepts and footwork positioning and more. I believe the old cliche goes, you can rely, oh, you can only go as far as talent can take you and the past receiver coaches lack the talent to teach a group of guys that we felt in the past could be a strong position instead of a weakness i feel the ravens were too scared uh under ozzy newsome management to develop receivers because he knew they would have to spend time effort and a whole lot of money that requires to pay top end guys over 34 mil a year however that has changed under the new GM, Eric DaCosta. He understood this principle and went out and hired Keith Williams and T. Martin, who are both quality receiver coaches who taught the best receivers in the game. Devontae Adams, Cheetah, even Sammy Watkins. Route concepts, how to set up a defender, and positioning. Bateman can finally be what we all have been clamoring for the development of our wide receivers, and more importantly, 
a go get it receiver and Bateman is the answer. Sammy Watkins can take Bateman underneath his wing and teach him a thing or two. Not to mention he will have Keith and T to help groom him into a true number one without even putting a ton of pressure on him. Bateman will be the two this year once Sammy leaves after this year, even if they don't extend him. Uh, Bateman would have learned everything from a veteran receiver and he would be able to ease his way into the number one. And that, my friend, is how Bateman has walked into the perfect scenario. I know this is lengthy, but it's been worse than this. Am I right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, love the channel. Keep pushing for that 100K. Can't wait to be there. And as my old friend Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, hasta la vista, baby. We out. P.S. We can finally say that these are not the same old Ravens. All right, that's it. I'm out. So, he's saying it's the perfect scenario for Rashad Bateman. Now, we talked about that over the years, and that had actually been one of my gripes, too. Um, if y'all remember, I remember when we drafted Hollywood and Miles Boykin. And I was like, you know what? Because I, I just wanted there to be a change with the Baltimore Ravens. And I was even willing to, for the season to be a struggle. And I, I remember talking about that either going into 2019 or going into 2020. I think maybe a, 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 even a blend of both. Um, that I was willing to go into the season young just so we could really turn that corner uh, at the wide receiver position and really develop our own because out of all the drafts, out of all the years, even though the Ravens ain't really been around that long, but for their entire existence, they just have not been able to do all the drafts and what now they have not been able to draft and develop wide receivers uh in a good way just has been a struggle there um and it's like man like is it something with scouting is it something with coaching is it something with just the way that this team operates what would it be and i told y'all what i feel like it is i feel like it's just because the ravens they they always in win now mode and when they're in win now mode it's like okay we're ready to win right here right now so we don't want to take the time to develop these young guys they bring in veterans who like he said been there done that and guys that don't need to be coached up so much don't need to be developed because they already developed because ravens have been so competitive so it's been a gift and a curse all at the same time now with rashad bateman uh he comes into the team where, yeah, they are still very young, and he looks to have a significant role uh, on this Ravens roster. Him being a first-round draft pick, him being a receiver, uh, and, you know, the Ravens, they needed to up the quality of their wide receivers, but they more importantly need to upgrade the uh, quality of their just the development of those young wide receivers, the coaching, uh, the passing game, um, and, and just the depth of the passing game. Um, and to really invest in the coaches like they did, it says a lot about the direction that they're trying to go. Now, of course, there was still the interest in Julio. There was still the interest in Juju. There was still the interest in T.Y. Hilton. There was still the interest in Kenny Galladay. And then last year, there was still the interest in Adam Thielen. There was still the interest in DeAndre Hopkins. So there was still that interest, interest to get that guy, have been there, done that guy. But with the guys that they've been interested in, it's been guys who, well, T.Y. Hilton, he's, I guess he's the oldest one out of the bunch. And, and Adam Thielen, he's up there too. But the majority of the guys that, well, and Julio's up there too, but Julio's a different up there. He's like up there in age, but he's up there in quality, way up there in quality over all the other guys except DeAndre Hopkins. But it seems as if the veterans over the past two years, well, year and a half or whatever, that Eric Acosta has been going after have been higher quality guys than what Ozzie Newsom would go after. Because Ozzie Newsom would get, and it, it was cool, guys, guys that we like, guys that we were rocking with, but again, as Ravens fans, uh, we, we're conditioned to think a certain way. We're conditioned to, especially at the wide receiver position. Because of what the team has done over the years, we're conditioned to think and be like, oh, oh, uh, this veteran guy, oh, we need to wait for the cap cuts. We need to wait for the cap cuts to get, get our guy at wide receiver uh, because, hey, we, th this veteran, he'll be fine. This older guy, yeah, he only got like two years left in him, maybe one, but it, yeah, it, it'll, be, it'll work out for us. We're, we're, we're conditioned to, to bargain shop. We're conditioned to go with that cheap option. And enough times cheap options get cheap results. So now Eric DaCosta, he, he went for the, some more, more expensive option. Now he has not closed not one deal yet on those options 
So this this has to be it. This has to work itself out uh, with Rashad Bateman. So that does add some pressure to Rashad Bateman, but Sammy Watkins can help take that off. Hollywood can help take that off. And then Rashad Bateman, if he can come in here and perform, he can help take pressure off of them too. So it is, and, and again, like you mentioned with the coaching, the coaching with, Martins and, with, with Martin and Williams, that can make a big difference too. And that can really help everybody as well. So this was some good uh, perspective as you all, when you do bring it, because you, you don't bring it that much. But when you do bring it, it's always fire in the room. Because like you said, it's been a while. It's been a little while. But, hey, I, I appreciate you sending this question in all of its length, too. Appreciate you, man. And speaking of the passing game, next question came from my guy Terrell B. He said, what's going on in Graven? Hope all is well. Everything is great. He said, after watching your videos, it all turns back to developing our own wide receivers. After looking at the free agency wide receivers that the Ravens did not sign, even though they attempted to. Uh, with our new wide receivers coaches who I believe wanted to start a camp for receivers that's entering the draft, I believe they are working on developing our receivers while developing other receivers. That's why they are stacking the wide receiver room. Do you believe this will actually be another offense created that no one has ever seen? And what I mean by that, uh, to clarify, um, is that Papa Dot and I watched an interview with another good college coach. I forget his name. He said he was happy for our two new coaches and smiled and stated that they had planned a developmental camp to help potential draft picks. I got to do research some more. Hey, if that's the case, more power uh, to Martin and Williams, to T. Martin and Keith Williams. Um, that, that would be pretty cool. But, yeah, this, this offense, like, this offense is not far away from really, like, being crazy good. And the passing game is the thing that that's that's the only part that they're lacking it. It's the only place that they're lacking it. Like if they make uh, significant improvements in the passing game, not even necessarily yards, but improvements in the pat in the quality of the passing game, oof, oof, it could be disgusting in a good way. They just they just got to make a little more improvements, man, and they this thing. Psh, it could take off. Next question came from my boy, Sang. He said, hey, Engraven, hope everything is okay with you and the fam. Oh, appreciate it, Sang. He said, I got three questions for you. Number one, why is everybody sleeping on Justice Hill? Uh, I think people sleep on Justice Hill because they sleep on some people, not everybody, but a lot of people sleep on special teams, and they forget about Justice Hill because when you talk about Ravens running backs, everybody is so focused on J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, which is understandable because they got the bulk load of the carries, and they're expected to continue to do that. But with Justice Hill, a lot of people for, just forget about him because he was just primarily a special teamer. Uh, he's a returner. He's a gunner. He, he's just a special teamer right now. And he can come in on offense, too, but he hasn't been really needed to come in on offense like that. So I think that's why people forget about Justice Hill. We remember Justice Hill on here, though, and we appreciate Justice Hill because what he does for the team on special teams, it goes under the radar. Uh, so I think that's what it is. And he said number two. Oh, another one. He said, will Miles Boy can be moved to tight end? No. Uh, or traded away, or will he step up? I don't think he'll be traded away. It's a possibility, though. It is a big possibility. But I don't I don't think it happens. I, I, I really don't. Um, I, I think that he'll continue to do what he does. Um, and he just got to get the opportunities. Uh, we were talking in Ravens Twitter spaces the other day, and I felt like Miles Boykin is a volume type of receiver um, to where – he if he's not getting the volume he's not going to really make his mark like that and i mean you can say that about a lot of receivers too a lot of players in general but miles boykin for sure um if his volume got amped up then i think people would like miles boykin a lot more uh and number three he said do you think greg roman should be on the hot seat i think he kind of already is uh, i think that that seat is for sure uh warming up like i said in another video his cheeks are definitely getting sweaty they're definitely getting sweaty because when when a team, when, when your organization, your place of employment brings in two, not one person, but two people to help you out in your department in an area where you have struggled at throughout the entirety of your career, that says a lot. That says a whole lot. So it, it's, he's, he's not on the hot seat, but that seat is getting hot. Next question came from my boy, Mike Reed. He said, team, keep it clean. Mike Reed here. Ken to Ed Reed, LOL. Long time no here. Well, from me, that is. Uh, but tuned in, though. You're my ESPN, no cap. Uh, cap is cap, by the way. But anyway, he said, anyway, in your voice. Oh, look at that. I didn't said my thing, and he said it, too. But anyway, uh, more of a statement than a question. I know everybody's patiently waiting for the season to get here. I've heard all the wide receiver talk, the pass rush talk, the pass blocking talk, etc. But I haven't heard anyone this offseason talk 
about one of the weaknesses from last year. Finish. Finish out the games, finish drives, but mainly finish the tackles. So a lot of missed tackles last year, but not wrapping up. First game against the Titans with A.J. Brown. It's my case in point. Oh, yeah, that, that one was... Ugh. That was nasty. That that game, oh, man. And even a Derrick Henry overtime run, but just, yeah. And I, I think with that, um, some of you guys, well, let, let me finish this question first. He said, I may be putting a lot on this, but it was just a thought. Hope all is well with you and the family and keep up the good work. Appreciate that, man. Um, yes, uh, that was an issue. But one of the things that I think we got to remember from last year uh, is that Last year, it was quite the – they had a lack of an offseason. Like, and of course, this was the entire NFL period. Uh, but they had a lack of an offseason. And not that it's necessarily an excuse, but it could have been one of those things where, hey, time was winding down. And, and even that, that game specifically, that's a very physical team. It's just like with the Baltimore Ravens. They, they like – the way that the Titans play, the way that the Ravens play is very, very similar. It's very similar. Um, I was just in the uh, the Twitter spaces the other day. Shout out to all them fellas from the Twitter spaces. But I was just in there the other day, and I was saying that because um, the subject that Ryan Tannehill got brought up. And some people calling him this and that. And I said, well, wait a minute now. Ryan Tannehill, he is very similar to a Lamar Jackson because they don't pass the ball often, but when they do, they make it count. It counts big. Because they, they are very, very efficient. They are very efficient because they are run-heavy teams, as we know. They'll take a strike here, too, through the year, but they, those are run-heavy teams. They live by, die by the run. And but when they pass, it's very efficient. They make good decisions. They take care of the ball. They're very efficient. Um, so with, with that being said, the Titans, when the Ravens played them, it's like when people play the Ravens. Ravens run, 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 run. And people get tired of tackling all that running. Don't, know, don't nobody feel like doing that the whole game. Like, man, you really going to keep running the ball? Stop. And when, when you can't stop somebody's run, that's when it becomes the most frustrating because it, it, it becomes a mind game at that point because the physicality is a huge part of it, of course, but then you're mentally draining them as well. So it's like, oh, here goes Derrick Henry again. We got to tackle this guy again. And then you throw physical A.J. Brown in there like, oh, man, here he goes again. Now you throw Julio in there too. <laughs> but it's the same way with the Ravens. Like, it's, man, oh, J.K. Dobbins running again. Come on now. Now, oh, Gus Edwards, the closer, the finisher. And you talked about finishing games. That's Gus Edwards' job too, but... Gus Edwards here now, come on. Oh, man, Lamar kept it. Why? What are y'all doing? to? And it becomes frustrating, physically frustrating and mentally frustrating and exhausting for both, too. So I think it was just an, a very exhausting season for them, especially because it started off just all kinds of bad. Not on the football field, but in the offseason because they didn't have it. Next question came from uh, Crit. <laughs> Next question came from Crystal. She said, good morning. I hope you and the family and the dog are doing fine. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Pookie. Uh, she said, I do not get excited when Ravens bring in these type of players. Uh, I just think that the Ravens are wasting everybody's time. Ravens don't spend enough money to get excellent receivers, so why bring them in? The ones that I know they will sign are relatively unknown or hurt. When they sign someone, I often say, who is that? If they want to win a Super Bowl, let's invest in the money into someone that will get us there. By the way, love your new addition to Team Keep It Clean. Bring them out more often. Have a blessed day. Appreciate it. And she was talking about Todd Gurley um, and some other high-profile wide receivers that the Ravens um, either have added or bring in for visits. Now, with Todd Gurley... Um, I, I like I said, I don't think they'll sign him. If they do, hey, okay, cool. Uh, they brought in um, Charles Clay for a visit. Uh, they br obviously signed Sammy Watkins, and I mean it's something that we were talking about earlier. Uh, Ravens, when it comes to that, that, it seems like they're trying to go young, but at the same time, go for somebody that has a good amount of experience. Um, but yeah, Sammy Watkins, he's been hurt a lot, so. Hopefully that changes this year, but again, that's why I think they got a Tylen Wallace too, even though he's been hurt too. But um, they this is why I think they went so heavy at wide receiver. Um, so just in case some of this stuff didn't work out as far as trade attempts, like I said, it hasn't worked out so far. For like the names that you know, like are those dudes at wide receiver? 
hasn't worked out. It everything just comes apart. Um, so they they really they they trying to run with their own now. They're trying to run with their own, um, but still not put too much money into it yet. Um, we'll see how things go this year with that. Um, I, I'm thinking they can get it done. It would have been nice to really get one of those guys, though, especially Julio. Ooh, because I, I said, if you would have got a Julio Jones, um, and he's been hurt too now, but if you would have got a Julio Jones now, you would have had that dude at wide receiver, one of the best receivers in the game right now, and somebody that's been one of the best receivers for a long time, and... Um, your your worst receiver would have been that much better with Julio Jones atop the depth chart. Oh man, it would have been nasty. But I mean, we'll, we'll see if it pays off for the Ravens uh, moving forward. Last question on this episode: a question from subs came from my guy Manuel. Shout out from Mexico. He said, "I was hearing the other day on ESPN about Lamar Jackson going under center, and then Ovlowski said it is a bad idea. I don't know if it was for controversy or if it is his opinion, but he said Lamar wouldn't benefit on it because of all the success he's had with the pistol formation. But I think he's wrong because having him under center benefits him not only as a passer but as a runner. Flacco was under center a lot, and he gave the ball to running backs very often, and that actually helped him with the passing game." Even though we were praying for him not to throw an interception. And Lamar will benefit from this because if you keep teasing the defense on him just giving the, to Gus the bus and J.K. Uh, when you're under center, next time you're under center, you can throw it to a wide open Hollywood or Watkins because the defense will think it's just another run play. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it and please tell Hollywood to lay, play Madden against you. We still need that tiebreaker. One day. But um, yeah, him, him being under center just adds more depth to the offense. It adds more depth to the offense, more versatility to the offense, and more depth and versatility to his game. Uh, this is NFL. It's NFL, and he has had a lot of success in the pistol and the shotgun formation and whatnot, but why not add snaps under center too? And again, last year should have taught the Ravens a valuable lesson that, hey, you need to have plays under center as well because what if you are having an experience of the bad snaps? Your center struggling. Then that, that eliminates – that doesn't eliminate 99%, but – it takes away the possibility of a bad shotgun snap because his, his hands are under center. So it decreases the chances of a bad snap a lot. Now, stuff still happens under there with it's a mix-up of the handoffs or whatnot, but it just lessens that. So if they could do that, it just adds so much to the Ravens' offense that it can just take them to another level. And then it can help Lamar with his three- to five-step drops and whatnot. It, just, it, it would up his game that much more, that much more. And with his back turned to the defense for them, like th that half a second, that could make a difference because they're on the on the in the running game and in play action too. So it just no. If, if he was saying that, I gotta watch the segment for myself. But if he was saying that it's a bad idea, I disagree.